welcome to the Coast to Coast podcast brought to you by Play Picks and the Lines. Coming to you from the West Coast, Josh Lander, joined by my guy Nate Weitzer on the East Coast. And we are looking at our player props video here for the Monday slate in this round one of the NBA playoffs. Uh, we are going to be taking a look at uh, what roughly what three games here that we have to choose from, but still some pretty good choices, I would say, on some props here in game two. Uh, do make sure you're liked and subscribed to that page. We're going to have every single game video up for you, uh, including a player props video each and every day like this one. Uh, so definitely want to make sure you're liked and subscribed. Continue to follow along with us these playoffs. Head to the lines.com as well. Make sure you head to that odds checker. Make sure you get in the props tool we have there. Make sure you're getting the best odds uh, and juice on those bets and NBA player props. Also head to play dot the lines.com where we have the ability for you guys to win a $25 Amazon gift card. Just hit that NBA daily pick them challenge, get all those correct. And we will send that gift card out to you. And as always, if you do still need a FanDuel or a DraftKings account, head to fdpicks.com or dkpicks.com and find those listings in your area, such as what we've got for some of these play up props. Nate, let's get into it. Yeah, there's nothing up yet for Steph Curry or Jordan Poole, really, because we're not sure who's going to start and who's going to come off the bench. But either way, they're going to be a partner with Draymond Green, who is back to his ways, you know, filling the stat sheet without scoring much. He actually had 12 points, which is above the norm for him in game one. Uh, Also, six rebounds, nine assists, three blocks in game one and some excellent defense on Jokic. Um, his prop tonight is 16 and a half rebounds and assists with Draymond is the one guy I'm not even really thinking about the points or combining it with anything. Uh, also interested in two and a half steals and blocks over there as he's all over the place. I like that. But, you know, I don't really understand a fan duel given, um, you know, shorter odds for him to get 10 points in the win versus 10 rebounds in the win. I think it's far more likely he gets 10 rebounds. Uh, just for an example, Draymond last year had a line of two points, 12 rebounds, 19 assists against these Denver Nuggets in April of 2021. This is a Nuggets team that allows the second highest assist to turnover ratio in all of basketball and the, the the dubs with their second highest turnover ratio, it's because they do a lot of home run plays and Draymond being the facilitator when he's healthy. Uh, you know, if it's going to result in a, in a wide open shot, like it did in game one, instead of a turnover, I think he'll pile up those assists. He's minus minus one fifty to get eight assists. So it's really a question. Do you think he's going to get uh, eight or nine rebounds tonight? I, I do think so. I think the minutes will be up more, as Denver puts up a little bit better of a fight in his playoff career, or really let's look since 2015 when, when the Warriors yeah. dynasty started 10 rebounds per game, seven assists per game, along with 3.2 steals or blocks. And then the last two years of their peak, 18.7 rebounds, assists per game uh, in those years playing nearly 39 minutes per game. I don't think he's going to get more than 33, but he did do that his last four against playoff teams to kind of round into form at the end of the regular season. And in those averaged eight, eight point eight rebounds, seven assists. So just below that prop, but that includes, you know, 25 minutes in the season finale against the Pelicans where he just kind of took the, the foot off the pedal there. So in, in big games, I, I trust Draymond to come through with, with the boards and I know he's going to be getting assists the way he runs that offense. Yeah. And, and that's the only reason um, I might try to consider the assists more so just because uh, the reason he didn't, I think top that in, in the, the, the rebounds and assists combined in game one was, was because they, they realized they, they won there. I'm sure they're still trying to make sure they ease him back to a degree and don't overwork him in the, in the early rounds. Um, but they, they could do that because they, they built a commanding lead by the time they got to the third quarter. Um, not so sure they're going to necessarily be able to just blow the doors off of the, uh, uh, Denver, uh, for the entirety of the game again. I think that's pretty good for your prop there, um, to make sure that he gets those minutes as well, um, where he didn't really need to play that many minutes. Uh, I believe yeah, he had less than 30 uh, minutes in game one um, just because they didn't really need to play him and they got other guys in there, whatever, whatever. Andrew Wiggins had a big rebounding game. Um, but either way, I think uh, the, the combo of them and, and the two in this one should hit. And, and I love the, the blocks and steals as he had three blocks alone uh, in game one as well. So uh, moving on to uh, Donnie, Donnie Mitchell. I can't obviously 
got to put him in the props if we're going to talk about him in the game videos as often as I have been talking about how much we like him uh, in the playoffs. And we like him in the playoffs because he their offense is Donovan Mitchell, uh, specifically in the second half of game one. It was 53% usage rate of Donnie Mitchell, meaning he's shooting more than half of his team's shots. Uh, in, in the first half, it was a completely different story. And, and I, you know, there's a direct correlation to why the Mavs were able to uh, have a, a, you know, take a uh, charge in the first half. Um, and really until the very end of the, the second quarter, they were in command of that game. Uh, Donnie Mitchell didn't take over till the second half. In the first, he had two points. Uh, his usage rate was at about 22%, um, one for nine from the field, uh, 0 for two from three, no boards. And then the second half, if you were watching, at all you saw him go off for 30 points in the second half 10 of 11 from the free throw line six boards in that time um look it's the playoffs and, and that's donnie and, and since 2020 um we're talking about 34 points a game for him on 46 46 split so 46 percent from three as well with a 38 percent usage rate in all of those games in the in, in the last couple of playoffs so um that's what the offense is for utah in the playoffs and he does come through to a degree especially when he realizes that he doesn't need to just pull threes and, and pull mid-range shots when he can get into the lane and, and charge downhill which is what he did in the second half getting to the free throw line uh, 11 times I know. What happened to our guy, Dorian Finney-Smith, who did such a good job on him the previous two games and in the first half? And then, yeah, Donnie, just sometimes there's too much talent. There's nothing yeah. you could do. Uh, I think we do expect Dallas to kind of trade uh, lineups for a little bit more offense in terms of playing Kleba more than Powell. Yeah. That's going to be good news for Donnie getting into the lane and getting mm -hmm. all the way to the rim. Uh, so I, I think we expect a little bit more offense in this game, certainly after a 99-93 game. So that's, you know, if Mitchell's going to get 32 and get 30 and a half in that low scoring game, I think he'll get over this prop as well. Good call. Uh, Tyrese Maxey, I mean, maybe we're be I don't think we're being too reactionary to say he can come within 20 points of his insane 38 point outcome. It, he's getting plus 100 odds to go over 18 and a half. Or you can just go up one more point and get plus 125 odds at FanDuel. Or you can take the Sixers, him to get 20 points in a Sixers win and get plus 180. Uh, oh, I think that is a very likely scenario. He averaged about 20 points per game on 52% field goal shooting in four against Toronto this season. Had a 33-point game. Then he only went for five uh, with Embiid posting a high usage rate in that second matchup. But 19 and 21 the last two. With James Harden, his points per game are actually up. Yep. His field goal percentage way up. His offensive rating way up. 10 points per 100 possessions to 127. And he's a plus 121 in those 21 games with Harden. Also hitting a full 1.2 more triples per game at 50%. We talked about a little in the game video. Harden doing just enough to threaten that Raptors defense and then open up these lanes for Maxi, who was just too quick for their big physical defenders who make it tough on a lot of other wings. You know, the Celtics might not enjoy this matchup as much as a guy like Maxi, who's just a blur. Um, so I guess I'm, that just made me feel bitter that the Celtics didn't draft Maxi when they had the, the chance to. So I'll just, I'll just pass it yeah, off. Yeah, to no, you. Let me take it from you uh, from there <laughs> and, and agree with you. And, and you said everything I would have said um, if I was able to make this pick uh, out loud, which is, um, you know, James Harden's 14 assists in game one really help you realize um, how much. It, the other thing is, I know this is silly, but uh, James Harden, I've never heard him speak highly of a young player or really say anything about anybody on his team. He has gone out of his way to talk about Tyrese Maxey a number of times and how he has the work ethic and he just, he trusts this kid. Um, and he obviously trusted him, assisting him on five of those buckets uh, of his four, five of his 14 assists were to Tyrese. Um, and yeah, the, the, the kid's nice, man. He's, he's going to continue to to blossom and obviously uh, we know the stage is not too much for him these props will rectify themselves at least by the second round if not by game three because 18 and a half for a guy who I think is going to continue to put I mean look the only thing that's threatening his his, his his point total is if they just decide to go to Embiid every single time and he decides not to kick it out because he wants to get his after only getting 18 points but I think Joel wants the championship more than anything I think he's plenty happy to allow uh, the young legs of Tyrese Maxey to just run rampant all over the floor there's no good matchup on the other on the other team like you said um, this is this is definitely a bad matchup and it, it might 
it, it's not a bad matchup for for the Celtics. They have obviously a lot better defense, but like you said, they could use a guy like him to just blow by others uh, as he's going to continue to do this playoffs. Uh, that'll be fine. They had a nice win against Brooklyn. Uh, anyway, let's finish off this night's with uh, one of my favorite players. Honestly, I love Will Barton. Will he be on the uh, on the Denver Nuggets here? He had a nice 24 point outing in game one, and I think we have to continue to take his props. 15 and a half points, Nate. That's just way too low. Um, his he's a, he's a playoff gamer, and when he is uh, when they do not have their two max players, as they have not now for two playoffs in a row, basically the, the Nuggets have not had Jamal Murray or Michael Porter Jr. Uh, you, this is the only other offensive threat for the Nuggets. Uh, the only other guy who can create his own shot, and the only other guy who plays well besides Monta Morris, who does play well off of Jokic, but had, did not show up in Game One. And I think you can continue to trust Will Barton. Fifteen and a half points is way too low for his prop. Is is the point I'm making here uh, in his last three playoff games? Right, he he was hurt last year uh, up up until uh, I believe it was Game Two against the Suns, and he only played the last three games of that series. In the first game back, he only had 16 minutes that he played, but in the next uh, couple of games there, and basically since including last night, his last three playoff games, um, you know, we're talking about 21 points, six boards, three assists, 34 minutes uh, with some pretty decent splits: 47% from the field, very good; 32% from three, good enough for him, and then 26% usage rate is what you look at when you don't have anybody else on Denver uh, to, to get buckets outside of Jokic. 15 and a half points is too low. I think he continues to get closer to 18 to 20 uh, for the rest of this series, to be honest. Yeah, and he had six rebounds and five dimes in that in that first game and 24 and a half PRA, also very juicy to me because, uh, yeah, the Nuggets just have a lot. They need a lot more from everybody else in terms of their production all around. Uh, Barton, yeah, his he's right in line with his per 36 numbers this year, but the difference is he's getting 36 minutes uh, and he's healthier than he has been. He played his most games 71 since 2017 yep. and started his most games ever. Um, and so 16 and a half points, five and a half rebounds, four and a half assists. That's what he gets you this season in 36 minutes. And I'd be shocked if he doesn't play 30 yeah. plus the way uh, the Nuggets have their backs against the wall here. Yeah, and, and he's not scared of anything. And then Michael Malone is going to need uh, somebody out there who's not scared to pull shots, man, because uh, that, that's going to be something that is continues to be sparse for them is that offensive output. But that is all the time we have for you guys in this one. Make sure you are liked and subscribed. As we mentioned, we're going to be bringing you every single game, a game video for all of these playoff uh, games here and matchups, including those weekends as well. Uh, so do like and sub sub subscribe with us. So until we see you next, happy betting.